In the last lecture, you figured out a series of commands to get the robot to the target cell. Our ultimate goal is to make the robot figure out a path to the target cell. In order to accomplish this, we need to devise an algorithm that will allow the robot to make intelligent decisions. Although writing such a program is difficult, the concept is simple. In his Artificial Intelligence for Robotics course, Sebastian Thrun calls the technique dynamic programming. Others refer to it as the flood fill algorithm. The idea is to assign each cell of the maze with a value related to how far it is from the target cell. To begin, we start with the target cell and assign it a value of zero. All neighboring cells not separated by a wall are given a higher value, in this case one. So this cell here is a neighbor, but there's a wall separating it, so it doesn't get assigned a value yet. After I assign this cell a value of 1, the next step is to go through and assign all of the ones that are in the cell. Their neighboring cells need to be given a value that's 1 higher, so the neighboring cell here is a 2, and there's one more neighboring cell, so this will get a 2. Then I have to go through again and look for all the cells that are neighboring the twos and give those a three. So this one gets a three, this is a three, and here's a three. Then I do the fours. The fives. The sixes. the sevens, the eights, the nines, and finally the last one is a ten. Once each cell of the maze is given a value, all our robot has to do is move to the neighboring cell with the smallest value. So if our robot starts out here, it doesn't really have much of a choice to begin with, but once it gets here, it has the option to go forward or turn right. And because the cell to the right has a smaller value, it's going to turn right. That's how our decision-making algorithm works. Now it has a choice to go left or right, and it's going to choose left or right again because this cell has a lower value. The next cell with a lower value is 5, and then again we have a choice between 4 and 6, so it goes to the 4, and then the 3, and the 2, and the 1, and then once it's here, it has a choice to go forward to the 2 or down to the 0. So just by following the path to the smallest neighboring cell, we're able to make our robot navigate a maze. Just to make sure you understand the concept, let's look at another maze. I want you to apply this algorithm to this new maze, and once you have assigned a value to each cell of the maze, and have drawn a path for the robot to follow, continue watching the rest of this video to see if you're correct. Pause the video now. Okay. I'm going to start out with a zero here, and the neighboring cells are ones, and then twos, threes, a four, fives, sixes, sevens, Eight, nines, tens, and finally an eleven. And the robot's path to this uh, to the target cell is to go forward and then forward again. And here it's going to go forward a lot one more time because the eight is less than the ten. And then it goes right, following the path down. And then it goes to the 4, 
And here it has two options. It could go, it could turn left to the three, or it could go forward to a three. And generally speaking, we have our robot go forward by default if there's a tie, and that's just because going forward is a little bit faster than turning. And it goes forward again, turns left, and of course it take, goes to the zero because zero is less than the two. The videos in this section of the course will guide you through developing an algorithm that assigns the correct values to each cell of a virtual maze. In the following section, you will learn how to apply this algorithm to control the movement of your robot in a real maze.